Hello, this is my PY Data talk. This is also my first talk. I'm very excited. I'm going to talk about COVID-19 visualizations. We talk about the qualities of the visualizations and also talk about what we can learn from those visualizations. The title is The Good, The Bad, and The Malicious. Okay. So here's the after one. At first, I will briefly introduce myself, uh, a little bit about my background, what I'm doing now, and why I want to work on the projects. Then we go to the outline of this project specifically, how we are going to analyze the qualities of the visualization. We'll do a short overview of basic scientific facts about COVID-19, because we're going to talk about the quality, the, uh, we're going to talk about the quality of the visualization, we have to talk about whether it is scientific or not first. Then I will give you a criteria how the review will be done. We will take several examples uh, from media and also from the um, scientific community and some from uh, which some popular relations on the internet. Then we will summarize what we learned from this project. All right. So um, a little bit about me. I'm a data science instructor at Governize. Governize is a bootcamp company which does software engineering and the data science instruction um, tutorial and bootcamping. So here's my teach, teaching model. I teach my students in a way that I want to be taught. Before that, I studied physics at the electrical engineering at USC. Unfortunately, I didn't graduate with a PhD in physics, but uh, a master in physics and a master in electrical engineering. I joined Information Sciences Institute as a research programmer. Then I left uh, ISI, great place um, to join Galvanize as an uh, instructor. I published research papers in quantum physics, chemistry, and knowledge graph. One paper for each domain. You can see my interests jump a lot, as many people who join data scientists um, from academic background. I also publish a book during the quarantine. Uh, it's going to be released in early November. So I try to um, create the statistical backgrounds for people who have no STEM backgrounds, um, try to build the statistics from intuition and example. There's a limited time promotion code for the PY data audience. I will put the code uh, in this uh, in the official uh, GitHub repo um, because this is recorded. Yeah, uh, I'm a keen fan, big fan of reproducibility and the first principles thinking. This is also why I want to do this project. Okay, so here's the introduction of the project. When I propose this project, that is May 18th, the COVID-19 death toll is about 30k, uh, a little more than 30k globally. At that time, there are already a lot of visualizations, data analysis projects about COVID-19 on the internet. So I think, okay, maybe I need to do something. So it is also a hot topic in data analytics and science, as I said, but I find some of the visualizations are flawed and quite a few of them looks like they are designed to mislead people without always limited analytical skills. I'm not happy. I think it's my duty to make a critical review of them. So this project target is beginners. So if you are from scientific back research background, you're probably well trained to spot some misleading parts of the relation or analysis. However, if you are you don't have such backgrounds or you're just a beginner in the data analysis field, it probably will be hard. Or maybe you have some intuition but don't know how to do it systematically. So this project is for you. It is also a like self-training project for myself. I want to develop a methodology for myself to spot the good, the bad, and the malicious projects um, in terms of COVID-19 realization. So there are no fancy machine learning algorithm. You can basically sit back and relax, and there's no parallel computing of thousand cores. So yeah, the goal of this project is to agitate, to raise awareness and uh, fight misinformation. Hearing misinformation means misleading visualization. We are going to talk about COVID-19 realization, and it's a serious topic because COVID-19 has drawn a huge amount of conspiracy theories. I can't imagine like any other topics can be more um, like a messy on the social media. So we need to first, first talk about scientific facts. So we need to define fact first. If you look at look up Wikipedia, this is the definition of a scientific fact. A scientific fact is a repeatable, careful observation or measurement, often comes from experimentation or other means, also called empirical evidence. However, this is kind of too philosophical. From a non-philosophical perspective, we can recognize a scientific fact is something that was recognized by scientific community collectively. However, one important feature is that it must be open to rebuttal. So the scientific community collectively, which means majority of them recognize 
It's a scientific fact. It's true. But if there are new evidence, a scientific fact will often will always be open to rebuttal. If you cannot challenge it, it's not a fact. It's just a claim. And the, the, the claim made by, I don't know, like a, yes, it just has to be open to rebuttal. And how about ongoing emergence of facts? This is important because scientists, researchers around the world, they're just doing research about COVID-19 every day and they're developing the so-called facts. So if it's ongoing emergence fact, we can further reduce, lower the bar a little bit. It may not be like, like a collectively recognized by the scientific community, but something, if you want to call it a fact, has, went, has to went through, um, has to go through scrutinous scientific examination, like peer review or double blind randomized control trial, for, for example, a, a clinical uh, trial. So there's something um, Dr. Fauci uh, mentioned during a hearing that there is no uh, like a, a solution for COVID-19. It's that there's no drug has went through double blind randomized control trial. So if you're interested, um, go check the link. Here is a short review of basic scientific facts about COVID-19. Uh, if you're interested, I have listed the sources of scientific facts from World Health Organization, CDC, and also Department of Health and Social Care of UK. So here are some important facts about COVID-19. First, COVID-19 is a caused by virus. We call it COVID-19 virus. It spreads through air, and the masks do reduce the risk of infection, both for yourself and for others. COVID-19 virus is not synthesized. It originally came from an animal, likely bats. COVID-19 is more deadly than a common flu. COVID-19 is also more damaging for older adults and people who have severe underlying medical conditions. So for people like in my age, um, it's probably like a death rate, I think it's about one over a thousand. But for people who are older, who have diabetes or who have heart disease, it's much more deadly for them. So we have the facts then we need to determine a set of criteria how we are going to determine the validation quality. Since we already have scientific facts to back, we have to back our uh, analysis, we have the first rule. The first one is we want to know what information the realization tries to convey. Does the information agree with the scientific facts? If the information the realization tries to convey does not agree with the scientific facts, then it's automatically a fail, a bad. What is the quality of the data source? This is also important. We want to investigate the quality of the data source. As the old saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. Then we want to know what kind of plot and aesthetic elements do the visualization use? Do such visualization elements help or not? So this is essentially a rough mapping of the so-called ggplot2 grammar. ggplot is not with, if you plot with ggram2 in R, you first consider uh, the data, and then the geometry. Geometry basically means what kind of graph you are going to plot box plot, pipe plot, histogram, etc. Then you consider the aesthetics, like the size, the fonts, uh, or the marker, etc. You want to know how data is represented and decorated. This will be our last criteria. All right, so if we have such criteria, then what is our steps to review the realization examples? I'm going to do three steps. In the first step, I'm going to examine the original realization, which is take a look at together. Then I will attempt to reproduce the visualization. This is probably the hardest part of this project because um, you will see there are problems like you don't have the data source or you find like a, what you created don't match with the original one. Since you don't have the data source, you don't know whether it's a, they just use a rigged data source or something is wrong uh, on our own side. But uh, we will see that. We will see like uh, how different cases um, like boil out. Then lastly, we provide comments according to our uh, review criteria. All right, so here comes our first example. This is a visualization um, broadcasted by Fox News. It is a confirmed case of COVID-19 by country. And uh, this picture has an image origin uh, attached from Twitter. And it is captured on March 18, 2020. So it, it's about uh, eight months ago. So you see, this is a world map. Background is uh, like a dark red. And uh, you have several countries, and you see countries without data, the blue part, and you see several red countries, which may indicate, I think, indicate the countries with high confirmed cases. OK, looks nice so far. So here I try to reproduce it. So first I need to draw a map, and I need to find the data. Since we are already in November at this moment, and then our data 
um, for that time has been like a long time ago. I go to the website called Our World in Data, which is an organization. It's a non-profit organization, and data source has been verified to be uh, the quality of data has verified to be true. So a uh, standard um, Python processing, uh, Pandas data cleaning. And uh, here is an explicit map from the uh, number of confirmed cases to the color. So um, the library I checked, I used comes from um, as a list of country names. So you will see like here I did some manipulation of a dictionary called records, which is it's just to match the country's name and remove the records which we are not interested in. Right. So this is a code for validation, um, and uh, thanks to this guy who provided the answer to this question, I basically adopted his answer and made some changes. Okay, so here is our validation. As you can see, uh, we do have more data um, because back in Mar March, we probably don't have a lot of data uh, for some countries, for example, in Africa and uh, South America. Now it looks all good, and we can somehow, to some degree, successfully uh, reproduce the original plot. But there is an issue. So if you look at the original plot, you will see for countries with confirmed cases uh, larger than 50, the colors are all red. So what about those group of this red group? What about the exact number of confirmed cases? So let's take a look. If you sort these filtered uh, records, you will see countries like the United Kingdom, and uh, South Korea, United States, and China, they all have country uh, have confirmed cases larger than 50. However, they are all colored red. At that time, March 18th, the United States of America have 108 confirmed cases. And China back then has more than 3,000. So this is a big issue because China effectively has 30 times more confirmed cases than the United States. However, on the map, they are all red. You cannot tell the information, and this information is important. Let's make some comments uh, according to our reviewing criteria. The visualization, like what kind of information does visualization tries to convey? It tries to represent the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 by country. Yeah, this information seems to be conveyed to some degree because different colors represent different numbers of cases. The quality of the data source seems to be good, although I don't have access to the original data source that Fox News used to create this validation. Um, by the way, this is something I deeply concern. Um, nowadays, our media usually publish their validation, um, their tables, but they don't provide the reproducible codes, how they produce this data, how they, how they use the data to produce such validation, and we don't have access to their original data. Uh, I hope there will be a moment uh, to um, change this situation. Then the third third criteria point is like what is the um the um what is the visual elements that the visualization creator to match to map the statistical information to the actual visual elements. So they use color, which is fine, but in this case it's a bad decision. I mean, which is fine in general, but here it's bad decision. So there's no visual differences for countries with deaths to more than fifty, as you can see, Iran, Italy, and China. They have like a like. A, Italian China has more than two thousand uh, confirmed cases. However, um, they are just uh, have the same just have the same color as the United Kingdom, the South Korea, and also the geological size differences of countries also influence judgment. Countries like Italian, Iran, and Spain need more visual attentions. So we have to always remember we ourselves are visual animals. You will see China, you will see United States, big red, but uh, actually Italian at that time and Iran has much more um, confirmed cases than United States. But this information cannot be deduced from the validation from the uh, of Fox News. So that's this one. Some are good, but uh, the key information, the exact the differences between different countries are not conveyed. I would say it's basically grade B validation if I have to choose from A, B, C, D. Yeah. Let's look at another one. This is a very interesting one. So this is uh, new cases per day, also from Fox News. I got it from Twitter. Uh, it is captured on April 9th, 2020. As you can see, um, this uh, I, uh, this picture was captured on April 9 um, by the Twitter user, but you can see the y-axis is April 1st. So likely it is uh, um, captured in early April, like April 2nd somehow. So um, remember this is a new cases per day and the total cases is uh, already more than 3,000. So you see, 
it is actually less than one month um, from the previous realization. The previous realization was March 18th, and this is uh, April, like uh, April, third, April 1st, less than two weeks, the total confirmed cases grew from slightly more than 100 to uh, almost uh, um, like uh, 3,500 3, um, or something. Yeah, 300, 3,300. 3, so let's do a critical review. And the first uh, we do try to do the reproducibility. So if you pay attention to this graph, especially the x-axis and the y-axis, we will see something interesting. You will see like the y-axis is actually not even, for example, Here's 19 and 100. From 19 to 100, the scale is roughly this large. But it's the same from 300 to 350, and 350 to 400. The same distance here represents 50 cases, and here represents 1 cases, 30 cases, and 30, 30 cases. So, how do we, like, what is the like, influence of this change of scales? Why Fox News do this? This is a question that hard to, which is hard to answer because we really don't know what they were thinking. But we can reproduce this graph on a regular, like a x y scale, y axis scale to see what's going on. So here it is. I just uh, use the data, um, which this, which is provided exactly in this graph, and uh, we will um, plot them um, with two different scales. So here is a trick. Uh, thanks to this guy who answered this question. If we want to reproduce this one, we have to create it, uh, interpolated um, data for our uh, tickets, for our, for our like uh, data cases, such that um, they will plot nicely on this axis. So I encourage you to examine the code to understand how the interpolation is done. I think it's basically linear, so um, there are probably other interpolation, but I just want to make it simple to avoid uh, like if I, as if I am manipulating the data. Yeah, code is here. Uh, go check that. All right. Here it is. On the left hand side, you will see the Y says is uh, even the tickers are evenly separated, separated from forty up to uh, zero up to four hundred, with exactly the same size of the graph. This is also from forty to uh, so zero to four hundred, but the scale are different. This is just separated by by forty, and here you see ten and uh, 50, 50, 50, 10. So uh, this is a Fox News scale. So what's the biggest difference between these two? At the first look, um, they may look very likely. Probably you won't say there is a difference. However, if you look close, look closely, you will see this point is strange. Um, I would say uh, March 29th, you have a data point at 246 new cases on that day. If you draw a horizontal line, somehow this is much higher than the uh, data, the corresponding data point in a normal Y scale. Um, this creates somehow an illusion. If you do like a linear integrate linear uh, regression with the last data points, you will see a slope somehow like this, right? But if you do it from the earlier days, you will see somehow like this. So they are not the same. But if you see on the Fox News scale, somehow you see the second derivative of the total case, which is a uh, rate of change of the daily new cases. They somehow look the same. The slope is roughly this, and the slope is also roughly this. So, if you use this scale, you may think, okay, the growing the growth 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 rate of the daily new cases is the same. However, if you use the daily cases, especially if you do a, like a regression, you will see, okay, the daily new cases is also growing rapidly. This is the same. Let's review and make some comments according to our criteria. The realization tries to present the daily confirmed cases in the United States, which it does. The data is assumed to be correct, and uh, um, yeah, it seems to be good enough. And we do see a line chart, which is probably the uh, best geometry, best type of graph you can choose for such a presentation purpose. Again, the data source is not provided. Um, that's fine in this case. However, the realization used an even scale for no obvious reason. I don't want to like guess they have a malicious attempt, but I just want, just want to say there's no obvious reasons. The accelerating increasing trend, which means what we see is the daily new cases, is actually not the total cases. The total cases will somehow behave like exponential growth. It is downplayed. However, this downplay is hidden. If you only see this graph, and if you only see this one, you don't see the graph that you can plot on the normal scale, you won't notice it. 
I would say it is at the boundary of misleading. It's a, it's hard to tell, you know. This is our second one. So here's additional comments. If you search online, you will find there are quite a lot of graphics from Fox News that you can find misleading. This one was found on Twitter. The image origin was um, March 2014. So this is Obamacare enrollment. Um, at that time, um, you can see by March 21st, 20, uh, 31st, this is a goal. And this is a total number of enrollment. And uh, you have like, a, what to say, four days left. It looks like you only achieved one third of your original goal, but look at the number, like you achieved about, I would say, more than 80% of the goal. So this is an issue because if you see, it's just an iceberger, most part of the iceberger is hidden in the sea, in the water. So um, there are two, Obamacare enrollment is doing great. It's not like you only achieving one third of that. This is a clear misleading. Unlike the one we just saw, this is clear misleading. And thanks to the origin it's from mediamatters.org, a great website. Um, like I'm not affiliated with that. Go check that. You will find a lot of examples how uh, the misleading realization uh, try to uh, by media try to convey um, information that just may not be true. So third one, this is a context-free realization. Very interesting. I found it also on Twitter. Um, not very popular, but this Twitter user claimed that. He or she wrote 11 papers on COVID-19, masked than the Sweden. Um, we don't have too much time to talk about Sweden, but Sweden is actually uh, somehow like a um, special case because it doesn't um, have uh, the regulation that you have to wear a mask uh, in public. Yeah, similar. And uh, he just uh, also wrote, wrote materials for those media and uh, its data analysis shows that uh, the difference, different than the narrative push because they say they even they lie daily. Sorry, they lie daily. They don't. Uh, this guy don't didn't write for them. And the normalized graph is below. So we will see what the normalized graph is. And they claim COVID nineteen follows standard curve with and without medication measures. This is a curve, interesting curve. There are four, uh, six different uh, land plots represent different areas of countries. You have a, a state in America. You have a country, 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 country. North American, North Europe countries, and also England, Belgium, um, not also England, not North Europe. And the axis, if you look closely at the value between zero and one, and the x axis, you have zero and up to 84. So, all even numbers, but uh, no information is given what this axis mean. no information is given what this y axis mean. However, if we know what they mean, as this guy claimed, there's really like, you can say there are big differences between these six countries, six uh, areas. So what's going on? I try to reproduce this, believe me, I try it. There's no context about this variation. So I think, okay, back, it has to be with mask. It has to be with uh, 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 a value, which is between zero and one. So I did some research online. The x-axis seems to be a time-like series. So up from zero to 84. So I tried to Google uh, like a, a data in two months or something like that. But uh, I, I didn't succeed. I didn't success, succeed. Since the y-axis scale is a float number between zero and one, I tried to search for the transmission, transmission rate. So transmission rate is, uh, um, if, we, we are, we, if we can show COVID-19, it should be a value smaller than one. It is the average infected new patients by uh, like new virus carrier. Um, by the um, by one carrier. So basically, if it's one, it means on average, a uh, virus carrier will uh, create another virus carrier. However, the transmission rate for uh, this Massachusetts was never below 0.7. So uh, in 2020, since the outbreak of the virus, I failed. If you know how to reproduce this graph, let me know. So I did go to uh, the website called uh, rt.live. Um, it is website created by the founder of Instagram, uh, and uh, it has uh, it was created by uh, uh, I think uh, two people who are um, who have backgrounds in the statistical analysis. So because RT can only be estimated, it's not like uh, the confirmed cases or test or that you have exact data. So great website, great validation. Go check out, and also um, we also we are also able to select the change the taker frequency. So uh, thank you to this guy who wrote the answer. Uh, here's the transmission rate of Massachusetts. As you can see, at the early days, horrible. Um, like on average, one person will infect like uh, three people, three, three persons, and it gradually goes down. At this point, it is about uh, slightly below 0 0.8. However, it was never below um, 0 
So what we see is not a uh, transmission rate. Um, so if you check the trend, grow, go down, and if you do some like a transformation of the scale, it doesn't look like you have you can have a 80 day range such that you see such a, a curve. No, I fail. So this variation is actually quite typical during the COVID age. Um, people with sub analytic skills they are not really interested by uh, interested in the y axis in the title the x axis. They just want to see what they want to see. You see, is a big issue, and some people just make use of that. The variation doesn't identify what issue it addresses, just to say with or without mask, with or without the uh, regulation, COVID-19 will just be the same. Okay, nowadays we know it's not the same scientifically, because most countries have contained COVID-19, especially in East Asia, I would say most countries. Yeah, because time will change. By the time you see this, uh, I don't know what happened. What will happen then? But the case is the scientific measures and regulation will change, mask will help. But uh, in this version, um, there's no specific like uh, clarification of what issue it addressed. And there is no specification about the source of the data. I cannot identify the source of the data. And I don't think anyone can create that, can identify that. The version, the version has no label, no skill, and no title. It conveys no information at all. All right, let's look at the last one. It comes from a tweet, and uh, it was... Uh, captured on March 22, 2020. So here are some quotes, and you can see some interesting quotes. I mentioned in the queue, and uh, the origin, it's something originated in Wuhan, why 5G was first, first introduced by Huawei. However, by October 2020, the Twitter user has limited access to his or her account. So if you create a, click this original tweet, you probably cannot see that anymore. This is a good addition. This is one of the most popular conspiracy theory about COVID-19 uh, online. So. This there's again no label, no skill, but uh, what the uh, like uh, the posters of this relation what they claim this one probably is, uh, like a part part of relation by New York Times is the total number of confirmed cases um, on, uh, like in different locations in America. New York was a hotspot, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and uh, Washington, um, and Seattle. This is the so called total number of installed 5G tower. So more 5G tower in New York, more 5G tower in Florida, in Washington State, um, in Seattle, and in um, California. So they claim 5G caused COVID-19. This is a story. So I tried to reproduce that. The first one is probably easier to re reproduce. However, I couldn't find the reliable data for the 5G tower installation in the United States. If you have it, if you, you know where to find it, Please let me know. I will upload the reproducibility um, code um, in the GitHub repo. So this repo will be updated if new data is available. So this validation tries to establish a cause-effect cause relationship between 5G tower installation and COVID-19 cases. The implied information is that 5G is the cause of COVID-19. And the validation shows two images from different sources in parallel, but I couldn't identify the source of the image. Again, the validation has no, has no label, no skill, and no title. The mistake made in this validation is a false reasoning of causality. In, like in plain English word, the simultaneousness, if something happens at the same time or in parallel, they don't necessarily establish the causality between the two events. You cannot say 5G caused COVID. Well, you can also not, you can't say like it's COVID that caused 5G. You have COVID in of 5G. Sometimes there's even no relationship, no correlation at all, not even causality. So, Perhaps there is a confounding factor in this case, the population. For example, uh, mobile service providers will prioritize 5G tower building in areas with high population density, and COVID-19 is also likely to spread faster in areas where population density is high. Um, I, the only paper, research paper, I can find about the relationship between COVID-19 and 5G is a retracted research. So if you publish something called retracted, which mean, it means it's seriously flawed, like you don't want people to see your publication. All right, so here's another interesting visualization. You can also visualize the number of Taco Bell. How many Taco Bells? You see, they somehow similar to the COVID-19 confirmed cases. They are also similar to the um, like number of 5G tower installations, if that's what they claim to be the 5G tower installation data. And if you look at the uh, population, you will see indeed the population is the confounding factor behind that. And you can actually justify that. With from first principle, because population is 
like it influence the transmission of COVID-19, influence the installation of 5G tower, and also install influence the opening of Taco Bells. Yeah, everybody loves Taco Bells. So if even if there is no like a causality, there can be correlation, and the correlation can be pure illusion. For example, from like like the end of last century to 2009, I would say. You, if you plot the number of people which are drawn, uh, drawn in swimming pool in the United States with the number of films that Nicolas Cage appeared in, you will find uh, like a 66% correlation. Okay. This is probably, Nicolas Cage is probably not the reason that people die in swimming pool. And here's another more shocking one, you could get a correlation more than 99%. So if you find the divorce rate, uh, divorce, number of divorce rate, divorce rate in a state in the, in the United States, and you compare it with the um, consumption of a certain product, you will see 99% correlation, which is total illusion. Can you just from first principle? Probably not. All right, so I'm running out of time. I will just summarize the, some lessons I learned, and uh, I hope you will also learn from that. As a visualization creator, for my students, for uh, junior data scientists, if you're going to create a visualization, first, always ensure the quality of the data, garbage in, garbage out, always, like it's classic, always true. Provide fully reproducible codes for visualization. So you're not only showing the final result, you are showing the whole pipeline from data to visualization. This cannot be stressed more. You should choose the right aesthetics for the right information. For example, when you choose color, or when you choose uh, colorness, uh, color, colorfulness, or you choose size, you should make sure you are choosing the right visual elements for the right information. It should be ethical. You should never mislead audience or your manager on purpose. If you find you somehow um, mislead people, make sure make notes. Uh, you don't do it next time. And as a visualization audience, I would say that you just see someone else's visualization. First, always go check the data source quality. If data source is provided, check it. If it's not, go ask for it. You should identify the reputation track of the visualization creator. You should be aware of the relationship between visual elements and statistical information. This is essentially a measure of the um, lessons for the creator. For example, colorfulness is usually not a good quantitative measure of quantity due to perception differences. So a 10% transparency, a difference between a 10% transparency and 20% transparency, which can be alpha, is maybe seen different in with like in different eyes of different people. So you should be self-aware that whether you are enjoying art or you are, you are extracting information. So don't be like a misled because you, it's just beautiful or it's just uh, like a creative. Yes, creative creativeness is important. Beautifulness is also important, but always be aware you are extracting information. You are not realizing I'm impressing like oh, oh, what kind of like, you know, enjoying uh, artwork. You're not enjoying artwork. At least uh, like you have to do something. You have to extract information. At the end, be a critical thinker. Always ask questions like a third reviewer because you are the one who are going to accept something. So ask questions and uh, torture the uh, realization creator to get what exactly is hiding behind the realization. That's about it. I hope you stay safe during this period of time. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. Thanks.